Howdy y'all. Welcome to part one of my wire armature tree tutorial, in which I'm going to cover the materials you'll need and how to make a basic pigtail from the wire, which is how I start all of my trees. Now, there's a lot of great videos on tree making and a lot of great information out there. So this series is going to focus more around the construction of a tree. Now, as an artist, I had painted and drawn trees my whole life in two dimension, but I really struggled with trees in the third dimension. And it took me a long time to understand how a tree was constructed, the basic skeleton, how has it become a 3D object? And so I'll insert a picture of my first tree. So anybody that's a little skeptical, you can see what my first tree was. And I just worked through it. I, that, to me, that was a failure. Um, and, you know, it, it took me a while to understand it. So I went back to some base, very basic things that I learned from art and photography to construct a tree in the third dimension. And that's what I want to focus on. It's less about, um, you know, how to, how to make the tree and more of what makes a tree a tree. So in the following weeks, I will post a video on making a very vertical tree which would be based off of a Melaleuca, which is a tree that I find in Florida. The Florida scrub pine, which is vertical, but you know, it's, it, these things are beautiful here because you know, you go, you see a hundred of these and then there'll be like that one, 2% that look like they're sculpted by a Japanese master. And then the third one will be the Florida oak, which are just gnarly hardwoods that are also very beautiful. So these are the three trees that I'm gonna focus on first, and who knows, I may make more. But understanding how to how these three different structures, so very vertical, whereas this has more horizontal branches, all work together. So now they have a kind of a little overview of where we're going. Here's the materials I use. Isopropyl alcohol, I use this in a spray bottle. I have static grass. Here I have pictured 12 millimeter, but I will use 12, seven, four and two millimeter for all these projects. Uh, light green, not, or this is a coarse turf in light green. So you can get coarse turf in any color, dark, light, and I will mix those. So I just, I have one of each, just so I don't take up the whole table. So coarse turf from Woodland Scenics knock leaves and medium green and they make a medium a light and a dark actually i think these might be light green sorry i'm in the wrong wrong canister um but i paint all these things so it really doesn't matter uh matte medium which in this one is is 50 diluted but i will use full strength and lighter dilutions molding paste by golden and crackle paste uh, i use this sparingly um little cups uh, good things because you'll need water and glue so you'll need something like that um, these are the this is how I form the base for the trees and I construct it now you could you could do this from the start or you can you can implement it later sometimes it's easier to do it from the beginning um, or you can glue it to a piece of cardboard but having a base to work on rather than holding the tree is much easier so this is a screw that's just gone uh, through a mounted it to uh, a piece of styrene, which is 60 mil, I think, or, or uh, six. an airbrush. Um, Tamaya paints in flat earth tones with black and gray. So any mix of those, and I'll vary those up. And then a pair of pliers are also handy. You can use needle nose, or I use needle nose sometimes because I want the curve but you could use a flat pair some, and a pair of side cutters. 26 gauge wire is what I use. This is a copper wire that's been coated with a black plastic, some sort of hobby knife, brushes. This will be used for glue. Something to spread the, uh, the golden paste. So I have a, uh, an assortment of things, plus I use a brush as well. And then a clamp to uh, clamp the wire. So when I form uh, the loop for the loom, this is what I use. 
and then a foam base if you're going to use um, the the base from the beginning. It's nice to have a foam base where you can stick it in there and it'll hold it while you work on it. Um, this comes in handy because you don't have to touch it. So if you've got paint on there or any kind of wash when you're done, uh, or even when the, the trunk, when you're doing the trunk with the, the molding paste, having a base or something, and I have different different sizes that I'll use, right? So you can hold it a little bit easier, but this makes it a lot easier to work on. So having some sort of foam base is is helpful. And that's pretty much it. So I'll be right back. I'm going to show you how to deal with the wire, because if you try to unspool this, you're done. So this, this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, because if, if you don't put this on something, so I'll show you what I did. So instantly, as soon as I get it, and this isn't the best method, but it's the only method I have that works. You want to find some sort of cylinder a little can, a little jar, a pipe or something like that, and, and slide it right off onto this. Because if, if this thing unspools, you will curse every day you live on this planet. It's, just, it's happened to me two or three times, and it's a nightmare. So do this immediately if you end up with something like this. If you have something that's already on a spool, let me know where you found it because this is, this is a nightmare. All right, be right back. All right, so this is going to be a little bit tricky to film, but what I've done is I've, I have these clamps, and so these are actually pretty nice because they have these little holes here, so I can stick the wire in there and hold it. And what I'm going to do is wrap the wire around two of them, and I'm going to form a, a loop. So the, the rule of thumb that I've found is for every inch, you want at least three to four times that in wire. So if you want a 10-inch tree, you're looking at uh, 30 to... 40 inches of of travel between these two things right so you want to stretch this out so if i if i was going to make a six inch tree i'd be looking at probably 24 to 30 inches spread right now this is smaller just because i'm trying to keep this in in the camera view so you can see it and then what you're going to do with your crazy horrible spool of wire is go around and try to keep them again this just becomes a nightmare this is actually the most tedious part of doing this which I'll probably edit out so we don't have to endure the pain of watching me constantly if you can get it it goes pretty quick once you lose it, it's over. As I'm doing now. Okay, so the more strands you have, the, um, the more branches you're going to have. And at this point, this is where it becomes a little tricky. So I grab it from the center because I don't want it to unspool. I release both sides. Right, and I come up and then I turn this in itself. And then... I twist this, right? And that is going to be your roots. And that'll be the rest of your tree. Now I twist it right now just to hold it. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to clip all these things in. But this is where we're going with. So this is how you form your basic pigtail. This will be the base for all the trees that I make. So if you can do this, if you can get to this point, then we're good. Then you can follow along with the rest of it.